Well, he, he, pretty soon in the, in the show, he starts to realize that, you know, he has to sooner or later deal with the supernatural element in his life. That's coming up very quickly. He's, and, and uh, you know, it is about, you know, you know, Damien is the Antichrist. You know, he, he has a task to bring about the apocalypse. That is the story we're telling. And I think he's going, uh, you know, kicking and screaming down at the hell. So it's a matter of making that journey as interesting as, and as complex and as surprising as possible. What are some of the challenges in creating an anti-hero that people are still going to root for even though he's destined to do something horrible? Well, you know, I think it's about um, injecting humanity into a character that, every, that people expect to be evil. You know, I think there's a version of this in which there's a very arch character. I think a lot of people are expecting that. We flip that on its head. And so it's a matter of people realizing that that is still the story we're telling. You know, we just had episode three and Damien, you know, saved a life. He also ended up killing somebody. So there's, you know, and he's starting to realize that there's this dark energy around him that has sort of a mind of its own. So, so it's a challenge to you know, and Bradley James does a great job of injecting the humanity into the character, and yet we have to make sure he's always taking one step down the, that path. That escalator death was pretty great, and there were moments oh, like you. that in the movies like The Pain of Glass. Uh, but since the Omen movies, the Final Destination movies mm -hmm. have made those sorts of deaths really elaborate. Is it mm -hmm. hard to come up with things that... Uh, that are terrifying and yet realistic that you can see that that happened. I think it's a matter of keeping those deaths grounded, you know, so that it, it feels like something that could happen to anybody at some at some point. You know, we had a a, a sinkhole death in the in the first episode. Um, you know, a couple miles away from where we filmed that in Toronto, uh, some guy was in a car and he ended up in a sinkhole. They had to get him out through his sunroof, you know. Uh, when we were filming the uh, the escalator death, there was uh, another girl in Toronto. She got a scarf caught in an escalator. She wasn't hurt or anything. Somebody, you know, shut off. The... So these things, these odd accidents do happen. And so we, we, I think it's a matter of keeping those grounded, you know, instead of having a very elaborate thing that, you know 50 things have to line up you just sort of keep it oddly grounded and and it resonates because the that escalated death I was I was I'll admit I was very surprised at how people responded to that I just thought it was a, a good horror gag but a lot of people were saying this is a fear of mine I can't believe you did this Even my sister called and said remember that time you got trapped on an escalator like I, I remember like I, it was something I was I don't know, I kind of got caught in one and I seem to have blocked that <laughs> myself. So uh, it's, it's that, that one struck a chord. It's sort of been an urban legend since the 90s. Yeah. All escalators. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of things people can't believe, you actually killed a dog. And that doesn't always yes. happen in series. Usually, you know, they kind of shy away from that type of thing. But you went there. Why did well, you Well, what do you mean about just killing a dog on screen? Exactly. Well, I've exactly. killed dogs on screen before. I wrote an episode of The Shield in which uh, Dutch choked a cat. Mm -hmm. And then when PETA was... I think it was PETA or some group had listed us as the most violent show toward animals. This is on the shield. I said, I can't talk to you right now because we're filming a scene in which I'm shooting a dog. Too. So, <laughs> so I've done this before. I've, uh, on the shield, we shot a lot of dogs. What was interesting about that scene, if I could say, is um, we shot one of one of the Rottweilers, and there was something about that detective that he was able to do that. So that's so he's kind of you know has uh, his own story to play, which I think people kind of glossed over. But but and we didn't really kill a dog. You know, it was a stunt dog. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting any backlash at all from the Catholic? church at all? Not that I know of. Um, I think, to be honest, when I have spoken to press in particular, um, um, you know, I think people are interested that we're taking the theology and the Catholic Church seriously. You know, one of our writers, uh, her husband is a theologian, and he called and said, you know, it, it, all of this stuff that you're saying is actually what is in the Bible. This is how the Bible was written or whatever. So, so we spent a lot of time trying to get that right. And I think as long as we're respectful and, and we are, you know, talking about real issues, 
um, I feel good about the material, and, and maybe that's why um, we haven't heard anything. But we're, we're taking it seriously. We're not we're not making fun of anybody. In any way, you know, you know. Scott, were you given much of a backstory so you know how to what's going on with this guy? Well, I, of course, I saw the original movie, and so then the Damien when he was five years old, and what the potential for harm was there, and it's. Uh, I, and I'd worked with Glenn before with, on The Walking Dead, and. and uh, but you mean in his backstory? Mm -hmm. yeah. Your character, yeah. Lions. Yeah. Well, he's certainly a power broker. He's he's uh, knows the corridors of power, and he's going to try to control the, the situation, which is a pretty dangerous place to put yourself. <laughs> going to try to control the devil seems to be a pretty dangerous thing. But it's interesting to me to see how how uh, Damien is really the person with the most, uh, he has more morality than anyone in the, in the show right now. I mean, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, so it, it's interesting, it, but John and uh, uh, Damien and? and Rutledge, right are two people who are trying to, to get involved and control the situation. So it, it'll be interesting to see how their relationship evolves too. For me. Yeah. <laughs> Can you preview anything coming up this season? Anything that people may be excited to look forward to? Well, you know, it's. It, I think the show, you know, it's been interesting to put the show out there and see how people are responding to it and and I feel that the, you know like I was saying with the escalator death or or some of the stuff when people these moments stick out um, the show is gonna get darker I mean it gets really dark and we have some episodes coming up that really I think are gonna push the limit of, of or it'll be interesting to see how people respond to it you know I don't think it ever gets gratuitous or anything but we go into some pretty dark territory so it'll be interesting to see how the the middle of the season plays and then I'm, I'm you know because that stuff is really with t taking risks and then the the end of the season I think is just a freight train it's just races and, and I'm really really proud of the finale and I think people will be pleased when they see how it all comes together and all the questions people have about Damien I think are going to be answered and, and uh, I'm excited for people to see it but yet there's still plenty of story for season two Oh yeah, yeah. Well, when we went into this, I mean, this is you know, I mean, he's got a whole world to destroy. That's complicated. <laughs> 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 That'll take a few seasons. You know, he might take it apart bit by bit, but you know, we'll get there. Rome Why wasn't you? destroyed overnight. What's that? Rome wasn't destroyed overnight. No, it takes it takes a while. You know. Why did you choose going to after Omen One instead of Omen Two? Maybe I, I really enjoyed Omen Two. I did enjoy Omen Two, but I thought that the. Uh, child was very cognizant that he was evil and had a, had a task to play. I wanted I wanted that to play out in a different way. When you see what we do throughout the season, you'll see what I'm going for. You know, but but I just didn't. It just put him a little further down the path, and I, I wanted to have a little more run. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it.